What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Studio Series Rise of the Beasts Voyager Class Rhinox. Now this is one that I've been super pumped to check out because we've definitely reviewed quite a few Rhinox figures from the movie line. You know, most recently being that Voyager. Thought it was a pretty solid figure, but going to be real with you guys, the second they announced the Studio Series version, it was game over for the competition. You know, this guy absolutely decimates pretty much all of those movie line Rhinox figures and honestly, I'd go as far as saying that at the moment, this might be my favourite Studio Series Maximal. I mean, we still have Optimus Primal left to see, but yeah, definitely heaps of fun, and in my opinion, does look a little better than Cheetor and Air Razor. But anyway, here we have Rhinox maximised into his robot mode, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe this is the best official look that we've so far seen for this guy's design in Rise of the Beasts, and... Yeah, it looks awesome, you know, really accurate to Beast Wars in some aspects, especially where the whole upper torso is, but as we flip this guy around to the back, bang, gone is the Rhinoceros head, which I believe is a first for Rhinox, you know, pretty much all of the Rhinox figures I own in my collection, whether it be from Kingdom or, you know, that movie line version, have always had that Rhino head kind of hanging over the neck, so, yeah, that's definitely going to be cool, creates for such an interesting transformation, and you can see various different kind of scratches and dents in the sculpt, it really does give you the impression that these maximal have been in battle against the Terracons for an incredibly long time, but in terms of the face sculpt, you know, I love all of the mechanized panels that we have stuck into this guy's face. I also love the neck region, and he appears to have these massive tusks kind of jutting out of the neck, so, you know, maybe if his weapon fails him, he can do a massive roly-poly and literally impel all of the Terracons, which is going to be pretty awesome. I have seen a few comments online in regards to his color scheme being a little dull and boring. To be honest, guys, I don't know what to tell you. You know, he is a rhino, they are grey, and this does appear to be pretty spawn to what we'll see in the movie, but really nice detail there for the forearm. He does remind me a lot of some of the knights that we saw in the Transformers 5 movie. I'm hoping that he gets a little more screen time than some of those, but yeah, really nice detail. I also like how they kept the shocks embedded within the shins. That's pretty sweet, and you can also see a few different kind of scars and cracks here. So yeah, all in all, cannot wait to see these Maximals in battle. Now, despite this guy appearing to be a little clunky in terms of his design, he is pretty decently articulated, so the head is on a ball joint. It will look down, it will look upwards. Going to be honest, you know, it's a little limited in the way you can kind of get a hold of it due to this massive neck brace, but it will go left to right, which is pretty awesome. The shoulders can rotate the full 360, and the pads themselves will also hinge out of the way, so you can get a pretty good kick going out to the side. We also get a bicep rotation, single jointed elbows, as well as a wrist joint, and I absolutely love how he has a fully uncompromised waist joint, despite him being so broad in terms of the upper torso. But whilst we're talking about that, he does have the rhinoceros tail just kind of dangling here out of his ass. Now, considering this would have been such an easy thing to kind of hide away. I am willing to bet that this is going to be accurate to the CGI design, you know, at the time of this recording, unfortunately, I haven't as of yet seen the movie, but I am going to say, you know, perhaps he is going to have this dangling around, which is going to be a little strange, but, you know, definitely going to make things interesting. In terms of the hips, they will kick forwards that far, and that is a pretty sick high kick, considering how kind of chunky he is in the torso region. They'll also kick backwards out to the sides. We get a thigh rotation. These pieces are very pliable, so they don't restrict any motion, which is pretty awesome. We also get a 90 degree bend there out of the knee, and I mean, check out the detail we have here. You can see various different kind of pistons and hydraulics. That does look sick, and I really like this kind of gunmetal plastic they've used for the thighs. But then finally, for the feet, they can go backwards as well as rock side to side. So yeah, all in all, a pretty nicely done looking figure. I also love the rust paint. You know, it's very similar from what we saw from the Smash Changer, and in my opinion, destroys the rust detail that we saw on that Studio Series Dark of the Moon Megatron. But anyway, in terms of weaponry, Gone are those Beast Wars accurate spinning Gatling guns, and here we have this barbaric looking mace weapon, or sledgehammer, or meat crusher, or Terracon destroyer. This thing looks super awesome, you know, I was quite surprised to see how much detail it has packed into the handle, but you can see these massive six spikes, which I can imagine him just slamming into the side of Scourge's face, you know, wiping out herds of Scorponox and Terracons with, so yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome. He does hold it pretty well. I will say, you know, from certain angles, it does come across the be a little too small, but again, you know, could be completely accurate to what we'll see in the movie, but yeah, overall, an incredibly impressive and strong looking bot mode, and to be honest, I think the biggest kind of geek out moment from the conversion was how they were able to conceal that rhino head, because as I said, I do think it is a first for Rhinox figures. Now, in terms of a few comparisons... 
here we have the Studio Series Rhinox alongside the Movie Line Voyager, which, you know what, on its own was a very strong figure, and I still stand by that. You know, it's kind of enjoyable to mess around with, and just as a Rhinox figure, it's pretty decent. But in terms of some of the shots that we've seen from the TV spots, yeah, the Studio Series version does just appear to take things to a whole other level in terms of the accuracy department, and the color scheme is a thousand times better. You know, I really don't know what they were thinking when they packed on this brown, but as we just spin these guys around here to the back, it's going to be super awesome to kind of see the differences between the transformations in just a second because as you guys can see this movie line Rhinox definitely had a lot of junk in the trunk I mean it basically had the ass of the Rhino the rear legs slapped on the back of the bot mode legs and it had the massive neck section and head of the Rhino here whereas this one cleans up so nicely so I am super pumped as to what they're going to do with that upcoming leader class studio series primal because honestly I've been incredibly impressed by that movie line figure I do just again think the studio series is going to take things to a whole other level. Here he is alongside a fellow Rise of the Beast Maximal, that being the Voyager class Cheetor, and judging from some of the TV spots we've seen, these do appear to be pretty good in terms of scale, and it's also worth noting that both of these designs do try their best to eliminate any obvious beast mode kibble in the bot mode. I mean, Cheetor completely got rid of the cheetah head in the chest, and Rhinox also gets rid of the Rhino head, so I guess the studio just kind of decided to get rid of things which maybe they thought would have come across a little strange in live action, which, yeah, to be honest, I think was probably a good idea. Next up, here we have him alongside Battle Trap, and it's kind of interesting to note that both of these characters in the movie are voiced by the same voice actor, so it's going to be interesting to see how they differentiate the two, and it'd also be awesome to see these two go up against each other in battle, because yeah, I just think it'd be sick. Kind of rounding off some of the Studio Series Maximals, here we have Deluxe Class Air Razor, and I guess in some ways it would probably make more sense to show her off in base mode, but I'm still holding out hope that she will at least transform once in the movie, because if we're to take anything from the TV spots or trailers, it's looking like she's just going to be stuck in base mode. Then we have him alongside the Rise of the Beast Deluxe Bumblebee, Movie Line Voyager Class Optimus Prime, Optimus Primal, Deluxe Class Wheeljack, aka Elton John, Mirage, Core Class R RC and Terracon Freezer. And then for two final comparisons, here we have him alongside the Yolo Park Optimus Primal, which is such a sick figure. You know, definitely be sure to check out his review if you haven't done so already. And then Leader Class Scourge. Now, as we get stuck into the transformation, as I've kind of alluded to, the conversion is pretty much completely different to every other Rhinox figure which has so far been released, which is actually kind of cool. So to kickstart things off with, you're first of all going to want to take these shin guards and just snap them into place on either side. I'm not sure if I mentioned this previously, but this piece here is articulated, so it can move back and forth. But specifically for beast mode, you're going to want to slightly spread the legs and take those tabs and make sure they smack themselves into these little slots. So just peg that in there. Next up, we're then going to want to take the wrists and rotate them here all the way around so the front is now facing the back. Do the exact same here for this side. Once you've done that, what we can then do is take the forearm and basically take this panel here, just attach it, rotate this piece here around, and then snap that back into place. I thought that was such a sick piece of engineering because it's completely different to the movie line version. But anyway, come here to this side and do the exact same. So rotate this piece here around. Then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you take these shoulder pads and clip them inward because as we take the biceps and kind of swivel these around, what is originally the back of the elbow will then come up and cover this, which I thought was pretty cool. So do the exact same here for this side. You'll then want to come around here to the back, take this panel and just loosen it out slightly and just hinge it out to the sides. We can then take this entire assembly here and detach it away from the body. Now, this is where the rhino head is stored. And I thought that was such a sick piece of engineering because as I said, completely different to any of the other Rhinox figures. So pull this piece out. We can then take these tusks and just fold them inside this cavity much like the movie line version you'll then take this neck brace angle this piece out and then take the top of the head split it wide open and then flip out the rhino horn snap that into place and then bring this piece back over click that in very securely and then these tiny little tabs will secure themselves into these slots that we have here on the neck so peg them in there what you'll then want to do is kind of angle the shoulders here outwards like this take his pecs split them out to the sides and then we can basically take the whole upper chest and swivel this piece here forwards. Now it does lock in via these little slots and tabs that are on the shoulders so you want to make sure that you kind of pull the chest piece forwards and not the shoulder joints. Once you've done that we can then take the pecs and they're going to come inwards and kind of groove themselves into these little slots and then these little tabs here are going to smack themselves into those slots so peg that in there. 
Now, what you're going to want to do is take these double jointed shoulders, extend them forwards, and they'll snap into place. And I also like the additional detail, such as these kind of hydraulics, which you don't even see in either beast or robot mode. So, yeah, that's a pretty sick touch. But just pull those forwards, snap that in, and that is basically the front of the Rhino transformed. Next up, you're going to want to come around here to the back. And as you guys can see, we do get these little pistons. They are indeed tabs. So, you'll want to unlock them and basically just bend the leg forwards. Do the exact same here for this side, making sure that this flexible piece kind of pushes itself past the shin guard. So just fold that up like that. Make sure the feet are nice and flattened out. And then what's going to happen here is basically his ass is going to come up and over. That tab is going to smack itself into that little slot. And then there are two little slots here on the underside that will peg into these little tabs. So just bring this over. Make sure that these legs are nice and compact. Basically, get them as tight as you possibly can to that skirt piece. And this here should just very nicely go over the top. Fold the tail down slightly. And bang, here we have Rhinox fully transformed into his beast mode. And this guy looks incredible. You know, it's awesome to see them put as much attention to detail into the beast mode as they've done for the robot mode. Because if some of the trailers were anything to go by, it does look as if though we're primarily going to see these Beast Wars characters in their beast modes. And yeah, this guy just looks sick. A thousand times nicer than the movie line version because he has quite a lot of curvature. I mean, the ass isn't completely flat. You know, I do like the way all this looks. And I thought it was incredible to kind of take the robot mode chest, shift it downwards here smack bang and center to kind of get it anatomically correct to a real life rhinoceros so yeah that's just such a nice attention detail but as you guys can see here from the top we do get various different overlapping mechanized panels again much like we've seen from the trailer and this is what rhinox looks like from the underside now in terms of articulation i do think he's the most articulated beast that we've so far seen from the studio series so the head can hinge up and down and yes they did paint the rhino eyes which i thought was pretty cool but the jaw can also open and close which I thought was a pretty sweet touch so you can get him roaring into battle much like we've seen from the trailer and the shoulders are not a brick so they will go forwards and backwards you can slightly move the elbow joints which is pretty cool and the front feet are on ball joints as well so they'll go forwards and backwards as well as rotate left to right in terms of the back legs you know because these are kind of double jointed due to the way they transform inwards you can get a pretty decent amount of articulation out of them so that's pretty sweet and these feet here can rock forwards and backwards and also in and out much like we saw for robot mode and the tail is articulated although I was expecting it to kind of be able to go down a little further but it does just come to a point and stop but you can lift it upwards so you know if you want him to poop all over the terracons and that is absolutely something you can do and in terms of weapon storage you know we can take this massive meat hammer basically take the top section detach it here and snap it into place and you can peg it into the top of the rhino mode to kind of create this thing which looks like a missile rack i mean you've got an armored rhinoceros this guy quite literally looks like a tank already but if you smack this kind of missile barge onto the top damn those terracons Terracons quite literally do not stand a chance. Now, as we jump into a few base mode comparisons, here we have the Studio Series Rhinox alongside that movie line version. And, do you know, as I said previously, this was a great figure in its own right. But in terms of accuracy and just the way the base modes look, the Studio Series version annihilates the movie line release. Because not only is it much more accurate in terms of colour, I mean, yes, I know it's very grey and boring, but that is what he looks like in the movie. But the proportions are near enough smack on. I mean, this guy had an incredibly flat ass and, to be fair, kind of looked like a brick. Whereas, you can see, there is a lot more... More curvature on this SS Rhinox and even the attention to detail of kind of the overlapping mechanical panels we have on the spines look so much more accurate here on the SS version so yeah it's kind of crazy to see just exactly what they pulled off with this SS release but yeah, such a sick looking figure. Next up, here we have him alongside, again, the Studio Series Cheetor. And these guys are pretty much identical in terms of their overall lengths. I mean, if we just compare them here to the side, I'll have to lift the tail up. And yeah, that does look kind of sus. It looks like Rhinox is about to eat some crap. But as you guys can see, yeah, these Maximals do appear to be huge in their beast mode. So cannot wait to see them do combat in both beast and robot mode. It's just going to be insane. But yeah, they are shaping up to be incredibly accurate from what we've so far seen from the movie. Here's how he stacks up alongside the Studio Series Air Razor, which unfortunately appears to be the most inaccurate out of the entire Studio Series Beast characters, at least as far as the color scheme goes. So I'm kind of hoping that either Hasbro or Takara Tomy themselves reissue this with a slightly more accurate color scheme, but... Yeah, much like Cheetor, you know, she was a big bird. So I am definitely excited to see the kind of scale that they're going to bring out with that upcoming leader class primal. Which, talking of, here we have the movie line 
Optimus Primal, just so you guys can see roughly how they stack up alongside each other. Here is how he fares with an average Studio Series Deluxe figure. So we have the Rise of the Beast Bumblebee, Movie Line Optimus Prime, and then finally RC in her robot mode, because I don't really think it would make sense to compare her in bike mode, because from the most recent trailer, we do see her rolling out into battle on the back of Rhinox, which I think may just go down as being one of the most badass action sequences we've ever seen in a Transformers movie. You know, I am so pumped for Rise of the Beasts. It is literally days away now, and the hype is most definitely real. But yeah, the scale between these two also appears to stack up incredibly nicely. Now as we get stuck into reverse transformation, let's maximize Rhinox into his robot mode. So to kickstart things off with, again, make sure that jaw is nice and closed. We can then come here to the back, take the thighs and basically just slightly bring them down because it will help to detach those tabs from his ass. So do the same here for this side. You'll then want to take this whole piece here and basically shift it upwards. You know, to tell the truth, we can snap it into place now. You don't have to save that step for later on. We can then take the knee joints, bring them backwards. And again, that hydraulic will very nicely just snap into place and do the same here for this side we can then take the shin guards now this can be a little difficult to do but you are supposed to just pull them forwards a little bit and you'll hear a nice satisfying click so do the same here for this side and that is basically the bottom of rhinox maximized now in terms of this whole assembly you're going to want to take the chest pull this section here forwards and then what we're going to do is take this neck piece so detach this here take this entire back assembly basically just shift this backwards because that will allow for enough clearance for us to then take the shoulders and basically bring those back on that double hinge joint and do the same here for this side. Once you've done that, you're going to want to make sure that you take the belly, fold this piece out, and then detach the pecs away from this entire chest region. Now, we're going to use those little slots and line them up perfectly with the tabs of the shoulders, which should hopefully help to keep everything snapped into place. So again, make sure you've shifted them backwards and that they are nice and straightened out. So we can just take this here, pull this section here back, and then snap that into place just like this we can then take the pecs snap those into place now in terms of this transformation again i don't think it's ever going to get old because it's super awesome but take the neck piece snap that in there split the head up and then take the rhino horn and you're going to want to make sure that it does tuck into that little cavity that we have here so snap that into place we'll then take these little tusks and fling these here out to the sides use this double hinge joint basically take this entire rhino head smack it in there and it should nicely just snap into the chest now that we've done that we can rotate here at the biceps take the shoulder pads and just slightly bring them out to the sides they'll basically just soft click into place and then take these forearm covers pop these pieces open rotate this around make sure that foot is nice and straightened out so it goes in giving us no problemos rotate here at the wrist and do the exact same here for the opposite side and bang there we have rhinox fully maximized back into his robot mode and so, wrapping up on this review for the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Rhinox. Overall, to kind of go back to my earlier point, I do think this is my favourite Studio Series Maximal, which has so far been released. I mean, in terms of the robot mode, whilst we still haven't seen a great glimpse of it in either a TV spot or a trailer, it does appear to be pretty smack on from some of the brief glimpses we have seen. You know, the detail is so much nicer than pretty much any of the other Rhinox figures which have so far been released for the movie line. I mean, I know it's very grey, but that does just appear to be the colour that he'll be in the movie and if you check out any real life rhinos they're also grey so I guess I can't complain too much it is nice where we do have metallic silver and a few gunmetal pieces and in particular rust because it does help to highlight some of those areas of scarring which looks sick but transformation you know really does remind me of some of the older Revenge of the Fallen figures pretty complex for a mainline Voyager but then we get smacked into that beast mode which is just as accurate as the bot mode and surprisingly is one of the most articulated beasts and in terms of its design it again looks awesome so yeah without a doubt this is the best Rhinox, which has so far been released for the movie. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below on this Rhinox. Is it one that you'll guys be adding to the collection? And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.